student legislative and how to lobby, and this is the official kickoff. It's football Saturday. So we're kicking off our new in-district lobby program. Uh, in your hand out there, you've got the Illinois in-district citizen lobby program, which they've been doing theirs for over 10 years now. They've got uh, activities in over 100 legislative and congressional districts. So we're not expecting to uh, uh, we're not expecting to get there overnight, but we need, we need to get started and take it to get through our new uh, plan. So did you hear about what we need to buy tickets for? We're spending big money lobbying in New York. Did you get... If you're registered, they're going to give you drink tickets and, and dinner tickets. The so, we buy them. They were a record But they're not selling those yet, are they? Is he joking? Yes, he is. Oh, I'm sorry. Here, let's get that started. Thank you. Well, there we are. Who are you? Yeah, that's what I'm going to say. <laughs> uh, my name is Mark Woodall. I've been a legislative chair for 20, uh, well, for a long time. Volunteer legislative chair. Uh, this year it's the 125th anniversary of the Sierra Club, founded in 1992 by John Wheeler. The 2018 session was the 30th anniversary of the Sierra Neil, uh, as, you, as you were in Sierra 101 or one of those meetings, you heard that the uh, word chapter was started in 83. In 89, our then chapter chair, Chuck McGrady, hired Neil and told him uh, people were upset about the outer loop around the bottom. So uh, that, that was a project for about 15 years, I guess. I don't remember what year that went away. In the Senate. Uh, and then McGrady went on to North Carolina to be chapter chair and the national president of the uh, we also have Dr. Schoenberg here, who is a uh, former staffer for our guest Senator Matt Cleveland, a uh, former congressional staffer, and uh, all-around uh, political expert. And he's gonna, uh, Neil's going to be doing the legislative issues when he has uh, the issues we know about. Jeff's going to be uh, talking about how to uh, uh, lobby, build a relationship, really. So I'm glad it's all about building a relationship. I uh, get a relationship. Um, before I was rudely interrupted, uh, we were saying that uh, in Georgia, you can take the big money, the big oil and uh, Georgia Power and uh, road contractors, but it takes an awful lot of people working together like Georgia Power. So like last session, uh, Petroleum Pipeline uh, legislation passed in 2017. It's, uh, Put a stop while we uh, halt the Palmetto Pipeline and go down to Savannah. Uh, we expect to this session to have a fracking regulation bill. So we can do things in Georgia, but uh, we ought to work together and have citizens lobby in, constituents lobby in. So that's what this industry lobby program is going to do. Uh, I think Jeff is going to lead off with uh, how to build a good relationship. Please forgive me, I have my notes on my little tiny cell phone. Um, so I'm Jeff Schoenberg. I'm uh, chapter vice, vice chair. Um, and uh, primarily the reason I know anything to say today about lobbying is because I used to be a lobby all the time. Um, I worked for federal legislators. Um, I was on uh, a senator's, I was a senior member of a senator's staff. Um, and I was the only person in the state of Georgia uh, designated to receive lobbying for him. Uh, I was the only guy on the ledge staff in Georgia. Um, so if you were a professional lobbyist, the chances were really good that you were going to be talking to the ledge staff in Washington. If you were an amateur, you got me. <laughs> um, so I saw good lobbying, I saw bad lobbying, and I saw it for years. Um, and I have, after I got out of uh, job where I was actually in government, I have done lobbying for nonprofits. I've helped lobbying for all sorts of stuff. I talk to legislators regularly. Um, I have a pretty good sense of how this works. Um, so lobbying is a kind of an ugly word. I'd like to at least address what it is that we think we're doing when we talk about lobbying. Because it doesn't have to be ugly. Neil's, Neil does it all the time. Look, he's beautiful. <laughs> 
Um, so what, what is it to be a lobbyist? What are, you tell me, what, 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 what are you trying to get done? If you're lobbying somebody, what is it that you're, you're after? Anyway, well, legislation. Affect legislation. Okay. Or, or pass legislation to build. Or look at funding allocation. Okay, so a host of target things that might be the subject of your lobbying effort. Anything broader? Influence. Persuade the representative to see your point of view. See your point of view. I like that even better than the subject matter. Kind of educate. Ooh, that's an excellent one. I would suggest, because I've written it down, I'll suggest the whole point of this, is you're trying to make the legislator feel the existence of an alliance between you and them so that they so that you are opening a space for votes and cooperation on those things you care about. Right? It can lead to any kind of cooperation if you're doing it right. They can be, become the author of bills, they can co-sponsor stuff, they can fight for your way of seeing things with people, the other people in government. Whatever it is that, that you want to get done, you want to get it done because they are aligned with you in their heads. You're creating this sense that you're in it together. If you do it really well, you, you're getting that person to want to say yes to you for, about the things that you're coming to talk to them. That person to want to say yes to you for, about the things that you're coming to talk to them. And the way you get anybody to want to say yes to you is to make them like you. Hugely important. <laughs> Likeability matters in this gig a lot. You have to be likable, you have to be trustworthy, you have to be dependable, because the I found the biggest part of somebody being really good at lobbying was for me to feel like if I asked them a question about their subject, the data that I would get back to pass along to the decision maker in my case, I wasn't the legislator, I was the, I had to be able to believe that they would tell me the truth. I had to trust them. If you can create a conduit of information that they trust, they understand why you're in it, what your values are, and they like dealing with you, you're going to get them to move in your direction. And so the most valuable thing you can do as a lobbyist is create a, a relationship of trust, build it over time, it becomes more valuable over time, it becomes more effective over time. That's the way you get it to work. Now, um, don't, uh, don't pretend to know something about you know nothing about. I'm in. <laughs> if, if you're going to be trustworthy, you have to not lie to them. And not knowing the answer means you have to say, I don't know the answer. We're talking about citizen lobbying. We're talking about having you folks go and talk about issues. You're not experts. We don't need you to be experts. I'm not an expert on 98% of the stuff Sierra Club cares about. We've got an expert. We got multiple experts actually. We got a whole network. And we can get information to the person you are talking to. If you get them interested enough to ask an intelligent question, we're already, you know, 60% the way to winning. You can say, I don't know, I'll get you that information. And then you can use Sierra Club's depth to get them the information they need. So what do you need to worry about to go into a lobbying meeting? It isn't being an expert, I promise you. It doesn't, you don't have to do that. You don't have to be a whiz of the legislative process either. It's not critical that you understand everything about how a bill becomes a law or about how power is executed, is, is, um, is managed in the halls of the state capitol, for example. Um, you gotta know a little, you can't be completely naive, but, but a little is enough. What you actually have to worry about is the stuff that I started with, trustworthiness, sincerity, having some values that they understand, making a human connection. Um, so, the homework that we expect before somebody starts doing this, um, because we are recruiting for people to do this across the state, and we will have, we, ha we will establish priorities for which legislators we really, really, really want to have somebody connect with on a routine basis. But, the broader our reach, the better. So everybody's potentially a helper in this game. If you've got the personality for it and the willingness to do this, 
we want to make sure we talk to you now that, that you talk to us so the homework basically is a little bit of know your legislator you, you, it makes sense to know what their assignments are it makes even more sense often to know what their big interests are so you know how to talk about them um, and know specifically how they voted on the issues that you are going to be lobbying on um, so that you go in with you know some just sort of basic background on where they are coming from on this issue if they've established a position um, when you get started the first thing to do is to establish your identity with the legislator you want to make sure if you are going to go talk to somebody that they understand who you are and why you're in front of them um, and ideally what we'd like for our folks to be doing is to, to establish that they intend to be in front of this person again and again and again that you're going to become a regular feature of their life um, and that you're going to be watching what they do on the issues that we're talking about and that you're going to make sure you're going to be communicating what they do with other people in their district um, that you are not just one person you are a representative of a lot of people and that you are a representative of, of a really big organization that is watching so you do that you also look for a real human connection that can be the way you start building a relationship you go to church with the guy if you your kids play softball together it doesn't matter what it is but that it is and you and maybe you imagine one until you have one but you find a human connection values you share something that you can talk about small talk goes a long way in getting these conversations rolling um, and and shared values on which you can bond if you're both veterans if you I, you guys know how to make a friend um, that's that's a big piece of getting started and getting these people comfortable with you as the interlocutory for us on these on this subject matter by the way every time you go into lobby we will prep we Sierra Club will prep our citizen lobbyists with the particular piece of legislation we're interested in with talking points and with strategy about how to talk about these issues um, but we you'll be in the room uh, so the the tenor of these conversations is established by the people who are actually having that conversation we can't control that you control that um, uh, let's see so every lobbying visit is worthy of making a real plan it isn't just a talk it is a strategic set of communications with, with a, a particular purpose. Um, and I would suggest, I mean, we could talk about all of these things in detail, but I would suggest that there are a few things that, that are important in every lobbying visit. The first thing is, even if you really don't like them, be polite, be positive. Even if they did something really stupid five minutes ago, they just hit the front of the, you know the front page of the paper. But your meeting is later that afternoon. You got to remember to be polite and positive. Um, and you might have to remind yourself, okay, I got to be polite. I got to be nice. So start with that idea. Um, whoever's in the room, make sure you've introduced everybody. Make sure the guy you're talking to, woman you're talking to, knows who you are. If you brought other people along to bolster the argument. Know who they are everybody introduces everybody be on topic my my strong suggestion is that when we do this you always walk into a lobbying session with one goal one not three not eight one even if we've got a bunch of things that are coming up um, it is if you come in with multiple priorities uh, then the person you're talking to can make you deprioritize they can make you uh, negotiate against yourself. Which one of these things really do I have to do to keep you happy? And the answer is, don't give them a choice. So don't start with three things, start with one. Um, and you gotta be on topic. You gotta stick with why you're there and what it's about and what you gotta get done. Um, brevity, 
when you get into the subject matter of a lobbying session, you got to give them the meat they need in a way that is easily digestible. That's remember that's got uh, that's got the punch of the eight hundred dollar. Uh, uh, what was that? I say it's punchy. The snail darter. Um, the I was actually going for the the uh, ashtray on the on the submarine that cost eight hundred dollars. Lobbyists put those factoids into the public debate, and those little factoids determined the outcome. In, in I mean, the snail darter eventually died, but generally, it really works very well to have something that is punchy and memorable and that impacts the argument. You can set the tone and the facts of, of the way somebody uh, thinks through the question if you can be punchy and quick and simple. So I, our work is to get you to be able to be punchy, quick, and simple. Your job is to stick with that all the way through the, the meeting. Um, fundamental truths move people. Um, long explanations don't. So speaking on value, speaking on why the topic matters, how it impacts real people in real ways that the person you're talking to will understand is the way to get them to, to move towards you. Um, and, and to trust you, that you're, you're speaking to them on things that will help them in their political career. Because in fact, so you know, doesn't matter if they're a state legislator, or a federal legislator, or anybody else in the world of politics, they want to know that the position you're asking them to take isn't going to ruin their lives, their political lives. Um, I think, oh, the ask. It's not a meeting unless you ask for something. You didn't, you didn't lobby. I mean, it's a meeting, but you didn't lobby unless you ask for a particular action on their part. And if you're good at it, you drive that ask until you hear something that sounds like a commitment from them before you leave the room. After you're done, you thank them every time. No matter if the meeting goes terribly, you thank them. Um, you, so you follow up with a thank you, you remind them of the ask and of the commitment. Doesn't help to not follow up with all that stuff if there is a commitment that you made in the meeting. You follow up on that ASAP, whether if that means pushing information up the Sierra Club chain, if it means getting information to them, if it means you know seeing the next softball game because you brought it up and you said you'd be there. I don't care what it is. If you volunteer something, you do that thing. You do that thing very actively, openly, and so they know it got done because, and the, maybe the big lesson is over delivery in this area is the way you develop uh, and the relationship you're trying to develop. That's how they come to trust you. Um, that's how they come to believe that what you have said to them in that meeting is going to come to fruition. 